Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, I'm going to be going over 50 interior design styles. That's right, 50. I have wanted to make this video for years, but I really wanted this to not be a deep dive into individual interior design styles. I just wanted an overview of 50, so you can get a really good idea of what you like, what you don't like, and then you can learn kind of what you like and dive a little bit deeper in sort of other places so that you can sort of narrow in on that style for you. Remember also that you can combine interior design styles. You might even notice that design styles in this video sort of overlap and that makes sense because design styles from different areas and different cultures and time periods overlap with each other and they draw inspiration from each other. So if you see similarities, that makes sense. Also, of course, shameless plug, I have a course where I actually go over a lot of interior design style stuff there to help you choose your signature style so you can find something that is uniquely your own, drawing inspiration from the kind of big ones that we're going to be talking about. All that being said, let's get going. First design style is going to be abstract design style. This focuses on non-representational shapes, forms, and colors, always sort of emphasizing different art artistic expression and different experimentation. Then we also have African design style. This encompasses a broad range of aesthetics from different regions of the continent. It really incorporates tribal patterns, bold, beautiful colors, natural materials, and traditional craftsmanship, reflecting the cultural heritage of various African cultures. Now, North African design styles really draw inspiration from sort of the rich cultural heritage of countries like Morocco, Tunisia, and Egypt. It features vibrant colors, intricate patterns, ornate tile work, and traditional elements like Moroccan lanterns or poofs, things like that. Now, South African design style tends to reflect the diverse cultural influences in that country and that region. It combines elements of African tribal art, colonial aesthetics, and also sort of contemporary design elements as well, and really features a lot of earth tones, sort of natural materials as well, and a lot of handmade crafts. American colonial. American colonial design styles take inspiration from the early colonial period of America. It features a blend of European influences, but still has kind of a lot of rustic elements sort of brings in as well. It includes rich wood furniture, classic patterns, and a bit of a warm sort of heavy color palette. Art Deco. Art Deco style emerged in the 1920s and 1930s, characterized by geometric shapes, luxurious materials, and decorative details. It combines modern and traditional elements with a strong focus on symmetrical design. So you're gonna see a lot of marbles, a lot of onyx, a lot of um, just really gorgeous jewel tones, like really gorgeous, rich, luxurious materials here. Artisanal. Artisanal design style celebrates craftsmanship and handmade elements. It emphasizes unique, one-of-a-kind pieces created by skilled artisans, showcasing their expertise and attention to detail. This is frequently combined with other similar sort of interior design styles. You see this sort of paired a lot with say arts and crafts, even with traditional looks as well. Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau is an artistic style popular in the late teen and early 20th centuries, really. It emphasizes flowing lines, organic motifs, and intricate designs, often drawing inspiration from nature. Things like uh, leaves, birds, fairies, flowers, things like that. Strong focus on curves and broken lines like you would see in nature. So not a lot of straight geometric. This is sort of what Art Deco was a response to in many ways. Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts interior design, also known as sort of the craftsman style, emerged as a reaction against sort of the mass production that we saw in the late 19 and early 20th century. It was really characterized by its emphasis on handcrafted, high quality materials and celebrated skilled craftsmanship. You see a lot of wood tones being used in this style. Very, very beautiful. Feels very heavy, but very intricate at the same time. Love it. Bauhaus. Bauhaus design style emerged in the early 20th century and focused on the principles of simplicity, functionality, and minimalism. It combines modernist aesthetics and craftsmanship. This really created a lot of inspiration around mid-century modern, which of course is a ubiquitous design style we're gonna get to later. Baroque. Baroque design style emerged in the 17th century and it's characterized by grandeur, opulence, and ornate details. It features elaborate furniture, gilded accents, intricate carvings, and dramatic patterns. Biophilic. Biophilic design focuses on incorporating elements of nature into indoor spaces, creating a connection with the natural world. It emphasizes use of natural materials, of course, such as wood and stone, but it also integrates actual life into the space, right? So lots of plants and lots of natural light as well. Biophilic design aims to improve well-being, it reduces stress, and promotes a sense of calm by bringing nature indoors. You see a lot of biophilic also being seen in Japan design and organic modern. It tends to get mixed in with other design styles that are super popular right now. Bohemian. Bohemian, otherwise known as boho, style embraces an eclectic mix of patterns, colors, and textures. It has a relaxed, carefree vibe, often incorporating global influences and a sense of artistic bohemianism. Ideally, it focuses on found objects from your travels, so it feels eclectic, but modern boho tends to be more curated with a sort of tighter or more neutral color palette. But really, this feels eclectic by design because it's supposed to be all the different pieces that you've gathered around the world as you're living your theoretically bohemian lifestyle. 
Chinoiserie. Chinoiserie design style emerged in the 17th and 18th century and is characterized by European interpretations of East Asian aesthetic. That part's important. It features ornate and whimsical patterns, pagoda motifs, lacquered furniture, and a lot of blue and white porcelain, creating an exotic and elegant atmosphere, exotic to the Europeans that created it. Because technically, as a style, this is a European style that really speaks to the fascination with Chinese culture at the time. Personally, I can see the through line between something like sort of ancient Chinese porcelain, which later sort of inspired the Dutch to create Delftware, which is named after the Dutch city of Delft, which you can then see incorporated into American traditional design as they were inspired by the Europeans. And then you also even see that in sort of modern interpretations of traditional, where you can see things like Delftware being used as sort of blue and white China, being used in things like Grand Millennial and Coastal Grandmother and styles that are popular right now. Coastal. Coastal design style reflects a beach or sort of a seaside atmosphere. It's characterized by light and airy spaces, lots of use of natural materials, really soft colors, especially sort of in the blue and white sort of category, and some nautical elements as well, trying not to be too, too themey. Now the colors usually used, as I said, are white, cream, navy. You'll also see a lot of beige and sort of jute materials, wood, things like that. A lot of natural materials, but definitely feeling that, you know, kind of things that reflect what you would see on the beach, like sand, water, sky, things like that. Contemporary. Contemporary design design style refers to the current design trends of the present time. So it often features clean lines, minimalist aesthetics, and a blend of modern and traditional elements. So don't confuse, this is, happens all the time, contemporary and modern. So modern refers to the modern era, which is the early to the mid 20th century, while contemporary is now, and contemporary is always changing. So what's contemporary now isn't gonna be contemporary in 30 years. Cottage core. So cottage core design style embodies a nostalgic, sort of cozy aesthetic. It's inspired by rural life and nature. It features sort of floral patterns, vintage furniture, pastel colors, and an emphasis sort of on a more simple and kind of wholesome, even like an agrarian lifestyle. Dark academia. Dark academia design style is inspired by traditional academic settings and literature. So it sort of features a really dark and moody colors. It has a lot in common with Gothic design, but it's a little bit more specific to kind of a book library Harvard sort of feel. There's also another version of course called light academia, which um, you know, the internet likes to create contrasting things. One person does something, someone has to do something different. And it's very similar in theme, but it's just a lighter palette and you'll see a lot of cream and it maintains some of that sort of academic vibe, but it kind of has a little bit more of kind of a whimsical feel to it. Eclectic. So eclectic style combines elements from various design periods and styles, creating sort of something really unique and personalized. It embraces a mix of textures, patterns, and colors, but rather than just throwing things in a room together, which is what I think a lot of people think of when they think of elect, they call things, oh, I'm eclectic, and it's just sort of thrown in. I think eclectic sort of thrives on the juxtaposition of different elements put together. So you might see something like a really gorgeous, kind of glamorous chandelier, but then you'd have it next to something like a plastic chair, right? It embraces sort of the unexpected, and it often combines this with different other interior design styles as well. So you might see boho eclectic or modern eclectic. You know, it sort of combines a lot of things really, really well, but I think it really thrives on that contrast. English countryside. So English countryside style draws inspiration, well, obviously from rural England, and it features sort of cozy rustic aesthetic and floral patterns, traditional furniture, and sort of really warm and inviting spaces. I sort of feel like this one in many ways feels a little bit more kind of updated to the arts and craft movement, which was very, of course, popular at the time in rural England. Rustic farmhouse. So a rustic farmhouse is characterized by its charming, nostalgic, and sort of traditional design elements. It draws inspiration from the simple, functional homes of rural areas, and it really emphasizes a warm and cozy atmosphere. So key features of a rustic farmhouse would be things like natural materials, of course, but having them with a really sort of authentically, that's important, weathered look, a lot of traditional details, and a sort of really cozy interior. This really rustic version kind of lacks sort of the modern conveniences that you'd see in its more modern counterpart. Modern farmhouse. So a modern farmhouse sort of blends contemporary design with the classic farmhouse style, resulting in a fresh and sort of updated look. It combines clean lines, minimalist aesthetics, and a sort of a touch of rustic charm really, but key features of a modern farmhouse include simplicity, fairly neutral color palette, sort of mixing different materials together, open floor plans, and sort of a blend of old and new. So this style also includes things like, um, you know, the farmhouse with the apron sink, modern appliances, different modern lighting fixtures, and sort of that really big, large farmhouse dining table for a large family. And modern interpretations of this style might even include a live, laugh, love sign, let's be honest. French Provincial. So French design style is known for its sort of elegant, its sophistication, and its ornate details. It sort of combines classic French elements with refined furnishings, intricate moldings, and luxurious fabrics. So blending this style with similar styles is very popular in contemporary design right now. So lots of crown moldings, beautiful panel moldings, chair rails, things like that. Glam. 
glam style really draws on styles like Art Deco and also Hollywood Regency, but with a palette that usually has more white, silver, gold, and gray. That seems to be the most popular. It features bold colors, lots of mirrored finishes, metallic accents, and sort of really lavish textiles. It tends not to follow the rules of Art Deco around things like symmetry. And if I'm being honest, this style doesn't really always have a love of quality that's reflected in those other styles. So instead of seeing luxurious marble, you'll see rhinestones, glitter, sequins. These tend to be used a lot more often to sort of mimic some of the expensive luxury materials that we see in some of the design styles that it's inspired by. That's kind of a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Grand Millennial. Grand Millennial design style is a modern take on sort of traditional aesthetics. So it's also known as granny chic and it sort of features a mix of sort of vintage and modern elements at the same time. So you'll see bold patterns, you know, eclectic decor and really a sense of nostalgia with things like kind of lots of ruffles and frills and things like that. It embraces maximalism and creates something really vibrant and very personal to the person that lives there. Greek. Greek design styles take inspiration from ancient Greek architecture and aesthetics, so lots of columns, things like that. It features clean lines, white and blue sort of color palettes to kind of reflect the architecture uh, and style of Greece. It has lots of columns, as I said, marble accents, and it really kind of creates a sense of elegance and timeless beauty. Also, finishes like plaster or lime wash, which are super, super popular right now, also are really you know reflected in that architecture of Greece, and you see that come through in this style even when it's not in Greece. Gothic. Gothic design style draws inspiration from medieval architecture and aesthetics. So it promotes things like, you know, we got pointed arches, vaulted ceilings, ornate details, really dark colors to create something really dramatic, but also a little bit romantic at the same time. Hollywood Regency. Hollywood Regency interior design is a glamorous and opulent design style that originated in the golden age of Hollywood, sort of in kind of the 1930s. It really draws inspiration from the lavish sets and glamorous lifestyles of Hollywood movies. It combines elements of art deco, but also has some neoclassical and even some mid-century sort of thrown in there. And it's characterized by its opulence, its boldness, and sort of its theatricality. This is not a subtle style by any means. It really creates a kind of strong sense of elegance and sort of drama to your living space. Indian. Indian design style embraces the rich cultural heritage of, it of India, and it really features a lot of really vibrant, beautiful colors, lots of jewel tones, intricate patterns like paisley and mandala, carved wood furniture, and decorative elements also like tapestries and textiles as well. It really looks for those kind of beautiful jewel tones of sapphire, ruby, and sort of emerald, which are really beautifully incorporated into the style. Industrial. Industrial style draws inspiration from old factories and industrial spaces. So it embraces like raw, unfinished materials, right? We got exposed brick and concrete, things like that. A lot of metal accents and sort of really utilitarian kind of aesthetics is really what it's going for. This style is very popular in loft conversions in many cities. So as kind of older industrial areas get repurposed into housing and with some commercial mixed in, you see this style being used a lot. So it's got usually really tall ceilings and using a lot of exposed brook, things like that. So a really good inspiration to look for is like the Soho neighborhood in New York City. I think every kind of city right now in the West kind of has their version of that. And you can see that as kind of inspiration for this style. Japanese. So Japanese design style is really influenced by sort of Zen philosophy and it emphasizes simplicity, minimalism, and natural elements. It features clean lines, lots of neutral colors, and so sort of a sense of tranquility. This is not a bright in your face style. You know, you might get some earthy sort of colors in there like rust and green and maybe some light blue and things like that. But it's, it you know, furniture is also like really kind of low and sort of close to the ground. A really beautiful, timeless, simple, elegant, but comfortable style, but not necessarily too in your face. Now, Japandi is sort of a fusion of Japanese and Scandinavian design styles. So it combines the simplicity and sort of the minimalism in Scandinavian design, but you get sort of that darker earthiness of Japanese design. So rather than having everything in sort of all white and light and gray, you get a little bit of that earthiness thrown in. And this style really utilizes a lot of earth tones as a result. You still get a lot of natural materials and sort of it really, it creates a grounded and calming space, which is true for both Scandinavian and Japanese styles. So you get that in Japandi as well. Maximalism. So maximalist design styles celebrate boldness and abundance okay so this is not a minimal this is the opposite of minimalism right so this is where you're gonna feature a lot of like vibrant colors you're gonna see a lot of mix and match patterns eclectic decor and sort of a layered approach to styling creating something that is visually rich and very expressive and and should really reflect the style and the personality of the person that lives there. there's lots of storytelling in this style Mediterranean so Mediterranean style really takes cues from the coastal regions of southern Europe so Italy south of France Spain Greece places like that. It incorporates sort of warm colors, textured surfaces, rustic furniture, and sort of influences from those areas around the Mediterranean. Mexican. Mexican design style reflects, of course, the vibrant, 
colorful culture of Mexico. So it incorporates lots of really big, bold colors. Really intricate tile work is really important, especially in places like the kitchen. Handmade colorful textiles, rustic furniture, and sort of traditional pottery. Mid-century modern. Mid-century modern style really emerged in the mid-20th century and it features clean lines, simple shapes, and sort of a more minimalist approach. This is a function first style. It often includes bold colors, geometric patterns, and sort of retro inspired furnishings. It was heavily inspired by Scandinavian design and the Bauhaus style, although it used sort of bolder colors and more man-made materials that were like molded plywood and plastic and things like that, which reflects the fact that manufacturing in the post-world era was changing. And some of these materials were able to be available to people to use to create beautiful sculptural pieces rather than sort of the hand carved stuff that sort of came before it. Minimalism. So minimalist design really focuses on simplicity and eliminating unnecessary elements. It features clean lines and a natural color palette and sort of a really clutter-free aesthetic. I think some people think of minimalism and they think of it being like an empty apartment. And it doesn't have to be that way. It just means really edited. Like everything is really intentional. It serves a purpose for being there. And it's sort of a frame of mind kind of in a way rather than necessarily strictly a design style. Moroccan. So Moroccan design style draws inspiration from the rich and exotic culture of Morocco. So it features lots of vibrant colors, intricate patterns, arches, mosaic tile work, and sort of really gorgeous, luxurious textiles like Moroccan rugs and poofs and things like that. This style, along with other styles, sort of really influenced other styles like boho, for example, being kind of a really popular one that has been popular for several years, really inspired by the Moroccan style. Neoclassic. Neoclassic design style really emerged in sort of the 18th century as a revival of sort of classic Greco-Roman sort of aesthetics. It features symmetrical designs, lots of clean lines, architectural elements are really key to this style, and sort of a refined and elegant sort of ambiance. Organic modern. Organic design style takes inspiration from nature, obviously, and emphasizes sort of natural materials, but also forms as well. So you see a lot of shapes that exist in nature and aren't necessarily sort of straight lines. It incorporates materials like wood, stone, and organic textiles, creating sort of a harmonious and sort of earthy atmosphere. So although the forms are minimal and can be similar to something like mid-century modern in many ways, they embrace some more organic lines in there as well. And the palette is a little bit more natural with sort of more natural materials used, which unlike mid-century modern, which can use things like plastic, organic modern doesn't really do that. Also, you might see things like a rustic bench, for example, thrown in there, which is a little bit more rough around the edges and sort of the, the typical clean straight lines that you'd see in mid-century. Pacific Northwestern. So Pacific Northwestern style is inspired by the natural beauty of the region. It features a blend of rustic and contemporary elements at the same time. It incorporates wood, stone, and also like earthy colors to create a cozy and inviting ambiance. Now, Key to this style, I think, is large glass windows are kind of a signature of this style. And it really just helps bring in a lot of natural light, which can be shy in this region where I live, because uh, I live here because you get a lot of rain during the winter months. But it also really sort of highlights the beauty of the natural area around you, because with all that rain comes a lot of beautiful greenery, a lot of trees. And so by having those big windows, you're really able to kind of bring that outside in, which is really key to this style. Postmodern. So postmodern design style emerged in the late 20th century, and this was a reaction against the rigidity of modernism. So it often includes more kind of eclectic combinations of shapes, colors, and styles, and it really sort of embraces irony and playfulness, and it's heavily inspired by the Memphis group, which was a, a group that instead of saying form follows function, it just said, hey, let's just throw out all the rules and just make it up as we go. And that's something really key to this style is it's really creative, I'll give it that. Rustic. So rustic design style embraces a warm and cozy aesthetic inspired by rural and natural elements. So it features natural materials such as wood and stone, earthy tones, and a sense of simplicity and comfort. Scandinavian. Scandinavian design style really emphasizes simplicity, functionality, and minimalism. So it features clean lines, light colors, lots of natural materials, nothing super manufactured, and a focus on creating a cozy and inviting atmosphere. You'll see a lot of wool, jute, light blonde wood flooring, lots of open windows, minimal window treatments to really maximize the light and the, that you're gonna get in those kind of long Scandinavian winters, and sort of bounce a lot of that light through things like white and lighter colors to really create something that feels very light and airy and open and comfortable and warm during those winter months. Shabby chic. 
Shabby chic design style embraces a vintage and really worn in look. It features distressed furniture, soft pastels, floral patterns, sort of a mix of sort of antique, while also some sort of repurposed pieces as well. It creates a sort of romantic and cozy atmosphere in that way. This style can feel comfortable and really worn in for people, and it's really sort of easy to put together for a lot of people. But it also, the chic part kind of makes it feel a little bit put together at the same time. So it's warm and comfortable, but also a little bit chic at the same time. Southwestern. Southwestern design style reflects the rustic and warm aesthetics of the American Southwest. It incorporates earthy tones, natural materials, a lot of Native American patterns, and sort of rustic furnishes, and it really creates a cozy and inviting atmosphere. Space Age. Space Age design emerged during the mid 20th century as was heavily influenced by the Space Age and sort of space exploration, which was obviously very topical at the time. So this style often features futuristic and really streamlined forms, sleek materials like metal and plastic, and sort of bold geometric shapes. It embraces a minimalist and really like high tech aesthetic with a focus on simplicity and functionality. So space age design aims to create a sense of modernity and also innovation with, through things like say the egg pod chair. This was also this sort of style heavily influenced mid-century modern as well. So you can see that sort of in like a Sputnik chandelier, which is very common to see a light fixture in mid-century modern, but also has a place here in space age as well. Steampunk. Steampunk is a design style inspired by 19th century Victorian and industrial elements. So it combines with the fantastical and futuristic concepts found in science fiction and fantasy at the time, but it combines sort of vintage and sort of mechanical and industrial elements with a sense of adventure and a little bit of whimsy as well. Steampunk interiors often feature exposed gears, vintage machinery, aged metal accents, ornate details, and sort of a color palette that's really influenced by Victorian aesthetics. It offers a unique blend of sort of historical and futuristic elements at the same time while creates a visually striking and imaginative environment. I find this is a very particular look for a very particular person, but it also can be interestingly sort of mixed in with different pieces as well, different styles. Traditional. Traditional design style really embodies a classic and timeless look, and it's really kind of a super category that a lot of other sort of design styles sort of fit into. It features formal furniture, really symmetrical layouts, rich colors, ornate details, and sort of traditional patterns like damasks or floral prints. So it creates a refined and elegant atmosphere, but it also feels really comfortable and familiar to us at the same time. Traditional is a style that feels really broad and can feel different depending on where you live in the world, of course, obviously, because it's rooted in culture and history. So here in North America, where I live, the traditional design really borrows a lot of Western European styles from Britain and France specifically. So especially things from the Renaissance and the Victorian periods. It feels very formal with its furniture layouts, right? So lots of symmetry, two sofas facing each other, right? But it also feels really comfortable and familiar because we know it so well. It feels very like grandma chic, right? It feels very comfortable. So you can see traditional influences are seen today in contemporary design styles. We see a lot of moldings and vintage pieces used in contemporary, and those absolutely have a place here in traditional as well. So again, you're going to see those crown moldings, wall moldings, chair rails, arches, which are super popular, and lots of interesting antiques. Transitional. So transitional design style, again, another massive broad category, but it really blends elements of traditional and contemporary together. So that's key, right? It sort of bridges the gap. So it features clean lines, a neutral color palette, a mix of textures, and a balance between old and new. So it creates a harmonious and timeless look that really suits both classic and also modern taste. Now transitional, as I said, is really a very broad category that other designs sort of fall into, but it's generally used in conversation as a style that feels traditional. So again, you're going to get that kind of ornate work. You're going to get a lot of that craftsmanship that's built in, but it feels like it's got a lighter and sort of brighter palette than you see in traditional design and also doesn't feel as fussy. So it feels formal, but also, you know, a little bit lighter and more modern in some ways, the typical traditional, which can feel like it's got a really warm, heavy color palette instead. Tropical. Tropical design style brings the vibrant and exotic feel of tropical environments indoors and incorporates really bold patterns, lush foliage, bright colors, a lot of natural textures, and it creates something really relaxed. But a lot of people really love just that feel like you're kind of living in a jungle. So lots and lots of plants like or plant motifs and things like wallpapers, art, but also like literally bringing in plants in the home is very obviously popular in tropical. And of course you would select tropical plants ideally for your space. And I find that tropical can feel a little bit overwhelming in the space, but it oftentimes gets combined with other styles like boho, for example, um, to create something really unique and interesting as well. Tuscan. So Tuscan design style takes inspiration from the Italian countryside. So it features warm colors, 
textured walls, rustic furnishings, and sort of Mediterranean influences, creating a welcome, sort of timeless atmosphere in a way. You see a lot of beige, a lot of rust, a lot of cherry red. Very, very popular um, in Tuscany, but also you see that a lot in the Tuscan design style that is still quite popular in some ways. This style for me, here in North America at least, feels very locked into the early 2000s where this was really, really popular, but you still see influences of uh, Tuscan design in uh, designs even today that people still love it. So that is it for today's video. This was a deep dive, was it ever, into 50 different interior design styles. I've timestamped everything down below. So refer back to this video. You can always come back. You can check out different design styles, see what you like. And again, dive deep into these styles to really understand them, the history, what sort of makes them tick a little bit so that you can start to choose pieces for your own home that reflect this style, but also feel uniquely your own as well, which is really what it's all about at the end of the day. So I also have lots of other videos that you can check out here, uh, including some interior design style deep dives that I've done myself. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.